So in this video, we're going to look at um, this image that I got from Wikipedia, right? the unit circle. We're going to look at where do these points come from all around the circle. Like why are we highlighting them and how do they find these numbers? So I think if you know how to find these points, you can always redraw the unit circle to figure out sine, cosine, tangent of all all different degree values. It, it becomes very helpful. So, so what I want to do is just grab this first quadrant and then I think you'll see why I, we really only need to figure out the points in the first quadrant. It, it leads us to the rest of the points throughout the shape. So let's just look at that. Um, oops. Don't want that. We're going to um, look at the first quadrant and figure out where do these points come from. Well, the first point, radical 3 over 2 and 1 half. What's going on there? Well, the hint is over here you see 30 degrees and pi over 6. Um, pi over 6 is 180 over 6, 180 degrees over 6, which we talked about in the last video, how in a unit circle you can think of pi as equaling 180 degrees. So it makes sense that pi divided by 6, 180 divided by 6 is just 30 anyway. So here we have a 30 degree angle. What does that mean? Well, let me just draw this. Here's kind of a snapshot of our first quadrant. And let me try to draw the arc. Um, yeah. And that's a good approximation. Okay. Actually, it's kind of a terrible approximation, but imagine this is the first part of the circle, the first quadrant. Um, what we have for the 30 degree angle is an angle of 30 degrees, raising from the x axis. And to figure out this point up here, right? Our goal is to find that point because really in, in these unit circles it's it is that's an, that's an x comma y point. But we think of it as a cosine of theta comma sine of theta. That's because the cosine of theta is going to equal x and the sine of theta is going to equal y. So if we can find this point right here, we found the cosine and the sine of our theta, which is 30 degrees. So what we do is we drop this line down, we get a right triangle once we close it. And this is a right triangle, in fact it's a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. And that has a special property where if the radius is 1, well I guess even if the radius is not 1, sorry about that. So the radius here is 1, and that's the hypotenuse. So in a 30, 60 degree, 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, this leg right here, the one that's across from the 30 degree angle, is going to be half of the hypotenuse. So it's going to be 1 half. And that means our y value is 1 half, so we're already halfway done with this point. So to find the other missing side, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, where a squared plus b squared is c squared. Well here, I know that um, one leg is a half. That's squared plus something else squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is just 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. 1 half squared is a fourth. A fourth plus b squared is 1. So b squared equals 1 minus a fourth, or 3 fourths. But we don't, know what, we don't want to know b squared, we want to know b, so that we can find this length right here, which will give us our x value. How do we do that? Well, b squared is equal to 3 fourths, so b is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, or just 2. And that's this distance, that is this distance right here, it's the square root of 3 over 2. So our x value, our x distance, is the square root of 3 over 2. And our y distance is 1 half, which is exactly what you see right here. Square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. And that's for 30 degrees. Now it's interesting, you might notice, look at the 60 degree angle right here. It's the same points, but the order is flipped. So let's look at why that makes sense. Um, so with the 60 degree angle, what you have is another 30, 60, 90 degree triangle but only flipped, right? The triangles flipped. First we had 30, 60, 90 here. So now let's look at how it flips when we start with a 60 degree angle. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna put this line here and just curve it. Well, that's kind of neat. Sorry about that though. We need a, a, sem a quarter circle here. That's a better approximation than the last one. Okay, so now we've got a 60 degree angle I guess right about here. So this is 60 degrees opening up this way. That's our theta. We drop this line down and we have another 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. 
It's just before, put the one from before in a lighter color, before we had a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle here. Now we have the same triangle, just turned, right? They're similar triangles for sure. And now this theta, instead of being 30, is 60 degrees. So if this is 60, this has to be 30 right here. And that means, well, this length down here, that property of the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle is that if the hypotenuse is 1, and it is, this is a unit circle, then the leg across from the 30 degree angle is half of that, half of the hypotenuse, which is just 1 half. So before the half was here, going up, now the half, half is going left to right, so the x value is 1 half. And if we use the Pythagorean theorem again to find out what our, our height is, our in this case our height, is we, could, we would find that that's the square root of 3 over 2, right? Because uh, we have 1 half squared again, plus an unknown squared equals 1 squared. And 1 squared is 1, 1 half squared is 1 fourth, 1 fourth plus b squared is 1. So b squared is equal to 1 minus a fourth, which is 3 fourths, and b equals the square root of that, which is the square root of 3. We can't simplify that any further over the square root of 4, which is just 2. So we have that point as well. So our 60 degree ang um, angle and our 30 degree angle, the sine and the cosine are just reversed because the triangles themselves and the angles are reversed. And what about this point in the middle, the 45 degree angle one? Well, what's interesting about that is, um, at first, you might, if you're trying the same process, you might not come up with the square root of 2 over 2, um, but, but the only extra step here is that we have to rationalize those fractions, and you'll see what I mean. So to find this point, the 45 degree angle, we set up our y-axis, our x-axis, and we're going to set up the corner circle. Don't need as much room. Okay, so the 45 degree angle is going to come... Whoa, that's neat. The 45 degree angle... Let me just draw that curve again. I'm playing with the curve tool here, and some of, some of it I don't really understand yet, I guess. Let's just curve this out. See, there we go again. I don't know what, know what I'm doing. Sorry. One last shot. Make up the quarter circle. Okay. So when I have this quarter circle, um, the 45 degree angle, it's going to be about halfway, right? Because this is 90, this is 0, 45 is right in the middle. I drop this line, and again, I have a right triangle. Well, what kind of triangle is this? This is a, a 45, 45 degree, um, 45, 45, 90 right triangle, which is isosceles. And the, the idea is that if these two angles are both both the exact same, 45 degrees, then that means that these two legs are both equal. So this is something, and this is a, another something. So in this case, x and y are equal, these two legs, our x distance and our y distance. So I don't know what my point is, but I, I know right from the start that both the x and y have to be equal because both these legs are equal. And how can we figure this out? Well, if our hypotenuse is 1, that means I can use the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse is 1 squared, and that's equal to one leg squared plus the other leg squared. But these two legs, as we just said, they're the exact same. So instead of a squared plus a squared, you could think of it as 2a squared. And that's going to equal 1 squared or 1. Now we divide both sides by 2 and get a squared equals a half. So a equals the square root of a half. Well, the square root of 1 is just 1. And the square root of 2, we have to leave it as the square root of 2. We can't simplify that. But notice that's not what we have up here. Because when we have 1 over the square root of 2, we rationalize it. We multiply it by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And what this does is, well, we multiply, we get 1 times the square root of 2. That's the square root of 2. And what is the square root of 2 times itself? Well, that's just 2. right? Remember, if you think of square root of 25, it's 5. So the square root of 25 times the square root of 25 is 5 times 5, or just 25. Same idea here, so the square root of 2 times itself is just 2. So we know that both a and both sides, a and a, have to equal the square root of 2 over 2. And that's this point. So it tells me that the cosine is this, and the sine is that. So it, it's interesting that with you have a 45 degree angle, the cosine and sine are, in fact, equal. And what's nice is that the unit circle shows you that. So what about all the other points? All these ones over here, do we have to figure them all out? 
Well, I, I hope you see that what's happening is like, with this point, let's map it around the circle. When I take it and I go here, notice that what's happened is only the y value has become negative. That's because we're taking this point and we're reflecting it off of the x-axis to down here. So of course the y values, instead of being going up a half, it's going down a half. So that gives us that point. What about this point over here? Well, this is kind of a reflection, well, there's a reflection off the origin. So instead of having positive and positive, we have negative, three, negative radical 3 over 2, and then negative 1 half. And that's this point as well. To get this point over here, it's just a reflection off the y-axis. So when you reflect off the y-axis, the x values become switched. So if we had a positive um, square root of 3 over 2 here, now we have a negative square root of 3, and the height's still the same. And the same applies for the other points. I mean, look at this one right here. Square root of 2 over 2 for both points, now it becomes the y value becomes negative, reflecting off the x. Here, both values become negative because we're reflecting on the origin. And up here, just the x value becomes negative because we're reflecting off the y-axis. And the same is true for this point. Positive and positive here, reflect all the way down to over here. Now it's a negative and negative point. And we go around, and here we switch the y values because we're going down from the x-axis instead of up. And here, we go left on the y-axis instead of right, so our x value is negative. So this is interesting because um, once we have these three points, we can get the rest, which also means that we can do the same thing for our angles, right? So this means that the sine, I mean, look at some of the patterns here. The sine and cosine of 225 is essentially the same thing as the sine and cosine and, and tangent, excuse me, of 45, except that now our, va our values are negative. Except the tangent, of course, interesting enough, since it's one value divided by the other, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive, the tangent is completely unchanged, which is, I think, something we'll cover in other videos. But you can keep track of these values just by looking at the unit circle. And let me show you an example of, of how to read one of these higher um, degree measures. Let's, let's look at, um, we'll look at 150, and then we'll look at 225, since we just talked about that. So how do you, what's going on here? Well, a 135 degree angle, um, or 150 we'll look at, 150 degree angle, opens up all the way here. So the unit circle then we say, well let's draw a line where that angle is and see where it hits the circle. Well now instead of trying to draw a huge triangle that has this 150 degree angle, why not just drop the line this way and form this triangle? So instead of dealing with this huge triangle that has 150 degrees, remember the unit circle allows us to deal with other angles because of this reason. We can now open the triangle this way. So instead of having theta be 150, we can think of this theta right here, this little one, and that's going to be equal to a 30 degree angle. But, but how can you deal with that? Well, um, we just have to keep track of the direction of x and y from there. I mean, if this is 30 degrees, that means this side is one half of the hypotenuse, so it goes up a half. But yet now, we'll find that this is the square root of 3 over 2, but we have to keep in mind it's negative because of the direction in the unit circle. So you can almost think of this as another, remember our first triangle was the 30 degree, 30, 60, 90 triangle over here. Well now the triangle is just being reflected over here. And everything's going to be the same except for the fact that we're reflecting on the y-axis, so our, our x value becomes negative. And that's the basic idea of how you'd use this unit circle. And you can do the same for a larger value. Let's look at 225, or 210, why not? We'll stick with the 30 degrees. We can't build a triangle with a 210 degree angle if we open up from here, but we can think of dropping this line down right here. And now we have another 30, 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And that makes sense. 210 degrees is 30 degrees past 180, and the 180 line is right here. Right? So we're going 30 degrees past that. So 210 just is like 180 plus 30. So we can think of this as another 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, except that everything has been flipped, the x and the y axis. So um, these, these lengths of the triangles, we can still think of it as a half and, and negative 3 over 2, except that now the half is, has a, a downward direction. So it's negative, and the square root of 3 over 2 is still a positive distance. It's just going to the left, so it's a negative direction as well. So we combine um, direction here. We think of negative as direction in, in these cases. And some um, the other interesting thing I kind of rushed to saying it is even though sometimes you flip everything, 
the tangent of 45 degrees is exactly equal to the tangent of 225. And why is this? Well, the tangent of 45, remember we said the tangent of 45 equals y over x. And y over x is just the square root of 2 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 2. That's right up here. And that's just 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. And the tangent of 225 is same thing, y over x, but this time negative square root of 2 over 2 over negative square root of 2 over 2. And that's just positive 1 as well. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So all these interesting patterns, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't even recognize that this is happening until I look at the unit circle. Like we'll see that the tangent of 315 equals the tangent of 135. And I think, in fact, all these tangents will probably be equal, won't they? We get all these interesting ideas from the circle. Here, the tangent of this is um, a negative divided by a positive. Here, oh, oops, I'm definitely wrong, sorry. The tangents of these won't be equal, will they? Because the y's are, the y's are, well, hmm. I apologize, yeah, these tangents will be the same. Let's just think about that for a moment. This y is negative 3, radical 3 over 2, divided by a half. Well, here we have positive radical 3 over 2 divided by negative a half. And we're not going to, well, if we figure that out, we would see that that's equal to negative radical 3 in both cases, if we divided that. And it's interesting to, to note that, yeah, this these will be equal as well. Well, cool, I just made that discovery. The tangent of 240, I guess it's, I'm sure it's been made before, but I made it for myself. The tangent of 240 definitely equals the tangent of 60, because in both cases we have this positive and divided by a positive and negative divided by a negative, we get the same value.